Meanwhile, at Tangmere Air Station, Squadron Leader Neville Duke, Britain's famous test pilot, walks out to his Hawker Hunter jet fighter, in which he set out to beat the world airspeed record held by America. In a second attempt, bad luck overtook him. He crash-landed at Dunsfold due to a defective undercarriage. Later that evening, the Royal Aero Club made the announcement that his first flight had broken the record.
On the border between Israel and Egypt, a troop of Israeli frontier guards patrol a troubled area. The locale being that described in the sensational announcement by the Little Republic that its forces have penetrated deep into Egypt's Sinai Desert in the direction of the Suez Canal. An assault, it is said, that had to be made because of constant Egyptian military attacks on Israeli citizens and the mining of land and sea approaches to the Republic. It's a time of border trouble for Israel, and another incident on the Jordanian frontier results in a roundup of Arab infiltrators. Action that follows an attempt by these illegal entrants into the country to terrorize the Israeli populace living near this troubled line. by British and French forces, the Israeli army that thrust into Egypt to precipitate a new Middle East crisis makes a brave show at a final inspection by General Moshe Dayan, field commander. A modern striking force, it swept to success in the Sinai Desert, cutting off the Gaza Strip to effect an amphibious landing near the Suez Canal after routing 20,000 Egyptian troops. Suez Canal, storm center of controversy for weeks, now becomes a cause of war in a lightning sequence of diplomatic and military moves. Since its seizure and nationalization by President Nasser of Egypt, the vital waterway has precipitated a new crisis in the already tense Middle East. Cracked French units are embarked at Marseille, bound for a joint staging area with Great Britain on Cyprus. Less than an hour's flight from Egyptian ports, where they are prepared for seizure of the canal by force. Simultaneously, Britain reinforces its garrison on the island for the same eventuality. 
A naval concentration in the eastern Mediterranean strengthens the military buildup, even as Israel, in a lightning attack, thrusts deep into Egypt to the vicinity of the canal. France and Britain issue a 12-hour ultimatum that all fighting must cease. Within hours of its exploration, Britain's warplanes are winging their way to Egypt, and its bombers attack five key cities, including Cairo. Following a Security Council veto by Britain and France of a United States motion for a ceasefire, President Eisenhower, after consultation with Secretary of State Dulles, makes a firm declaration of United States policy. The United States was not consulted in any way about any phase of these actions, nor were we informed of them in advance. In the circumstances I have described, there will be no United States involvement in these present hostilities. I therefore have no plan to call the Congress in special session. Of course, we shall continue to keep in contact with congressional leaders of both parties. It is our hope and intent that this matter will be brought before the United Nations General Assembly. There, with no veto operating, the opinion of the world can be brought to bear in our quest for a just end to this tormenting problem. In the past, the United Nations has proved able to find a way to end bloodshed. We believe it can and that it will do so again. The whole question is brought before an emergency session of the General Assembly, where it faces the bar of world opinion.
captured Egyptian standard is displayed for the movie tone news cameraman with Israel's punitive expedition into the Sinai Peninsula, where knocked out Egyptian tanks and silenced enemy batteries mark the advance of the Israeli fighters. Though captured Egyptian wounded are treated with every consideration. Too late for the dead comes the news that Israel has notified the United Nations that it accepts the General Assembly's ceasefire appeal. But an anxious world hears the news with hope. For it can mean peace here, too. For this is the disputed Gaza Strip, where a lightning strike by an Israeli force bottled up 20,000 crack Egyptian troops, and a continuance of the hostilities could result in their slaughter. Israel now claims complete control of the Strip, and the latest activities of the Republic's forces are confined to mopping up operations, which may be the last in the whole Middle East crisis. The latest news incidental to the release of these pictures being that Britain has told the UN that it has ordered all bombings to stop forthwith. News flashed immediately to all Israeli, French, and British advance units. With an interest based on the deep patriotism of the Israeli for their reborn homeland, the population of the Republic follow the news from the Sinai Peninsula and the Gaza Strip with anxious concern. While in Tel Aviv and other Israeli cities, armed civilian patrols are ready for any emergency. And everywhere throughout the country, girls too young for more active duties work day and night assembling first aid kits for the front. In tow to Haifa, the Egyptian destroyer Ibrahim Awal is an early prize in this latest outbreak of hostilities between Israel and Egypt. Crippled by rocket-firing jet bombers, the destroyer was captured after a three-hour battle, the first surface ship in history to surrender to aircraft. Tone news cameraman went right along with the Anglo-French expedition against Egypt to be at Port Said to film the start of the amphibious attack on the Mediterranean mouth of the Suez.
events that was followed after bitter fighting in the taking of Said and Port Fouad. Claimed to have as its objective the restoration of order in the Middle East, the action also engages paratroopers, with France contributing one of its crack regiments of camouflage sky fighters, ready for the invasion at zero hour, which a British transport spearheads carrying a company of airborne islanders. The first objective is an Egyptian army airfield outside Port Said, and there's no hesitation by the Tommies, though they jump into a cackling inferno of ACAC. Troopers soon controlled the canal zone shown below, after which the UN ceasefire plan was accepted by the invaders, but not before the waterway was closed by Egyptian sinkings of blockade ships. At the western end of the Suez Canal, the Danish salvage ship Protector puts over the first divers who will actually start working on submerged ships that are blocking the waterway. Under the direction of United Nations experts, the Danes, with divers from several other nations, will begin by clearing away major obstructions first. Later, they'll go to work on removing smaller hulks and wreckage from the canal's edges. A signal for hope that it will not be long before a passage is cleared for at least small boats.